Kevin, let's talk for a moment about, I've decided that I, I, I want to have a discussion with you about bankruptcy and what's, what's appropriate. And I schedule a meeting with you. What do I need to do to prepare to make that meeting as productive for both of us as I can? What I'd like you to do is bring a lot of the information that I'm going to need to assess your case that I'm going to put in the petition. Um, ideally, I want to know what your income is for the last six months because that determines your eligibility. So if you're a W-2 employee, I want your pay stubs for the last six months. If you're self-employed, you may have like a profit loss statement. It doesn't have to be exact, just kind of a rough idea. Um, I'm going to want a bank statement, and I'm going to want a copy of all your debts. Credit card statement, mortgage statement, um, any leases that you have, apartment, car, house lease, bring that in. Last two tax returns, two thousand, you know, going back on that. And that's basically about it. Um, if you got anything from lawyers, any lawsuits. With that information, usually that's all I need to assess your case, and really that's all I need to start drafting your petition. That's one reason why we're able to keep our prices down a little is because we get the stuff early where we're able to kind of streamline the process a little bit, and it makes it more affordable for people. Kevin, let's talk a little bit about other assets that are either mine or family members, and I'm going through bankruptcy. For example, what happens to my personal retirement account? Retirements in Colorado are 100% exempt. IRAs, 401k, government pensions, they're all exempt. That's one nice thing about bankruptcy is they are 100% exempt, meaning the trustee can't take anything from you in your retirement account. Whether it's $1,000, $10,000, $100,000, that is completely safe in a bankruptcy. With joint assets, you know, again, it's a question of whether it's exempt or not. Most joint assets are exempt. Um, but if it's your spouse's asset and he or she is not filing, then th that's something that the trustee can't look at. If you have savings accounts with your children, if you're the joint owner, what we always recommend is become the custodian of the account. That's a huge difference. When you're the custodian, you're, you don't have any ownership of it, but you can still control it for your kid's best interest, and those would be exempt as well. So that's the best way to go about it. But that's the beauty of bankruptcy is that you can you know, protect your retirement, and sometimes it's just unfortunate. I see too many people who deplete the retirement accounts to pay credit cards when they've been better in bankruptcy, because in bankruptcy, you eliminate all the credit card debt and you keep all your retirement. And when you come out of it, you're going to be in a stronger position that way. What if I'm receiving government benefits of some sort, Social Security or whatever that may be? Mm -hmm. What happens with those payments? Nothing. Um, all government benefits typically are based on need. If you are drawing Social Security, you continue to draw Social Security. If you're getting food stamps, you get food stamps. If you're seeking student loans through a government agency, you're still eligible for those because government, federally backed student loans are based on need. And if you have the need, the financial need for student loans, you'll still get them even after a bankruptcy.